I recently showed how this connect function from ng extension can make using signals and RxJS for state management a lot easier. So just a super quick recap, for this situation where we would otherwise have to manually subscribe to some observable data sources and then update a state signal, we can instead use the connect function. This essentially does the same thing. It is still doing the manual subscribe, but it tucks it all the way neatly behind the scenes. It gives us an easy way to take values from an observable stream and set them into a signal. A point worth addressing that came up a few times in the previous video was, isn't this just the same as using to signal to convert an observable to a signal? So there is an important difference here. With connect, we are taking values from an observable stream and setting them into a signal, which we are using to store state. And this state signal can also be updated by other things as well. With this setup, it is the signal that is handling our state. With to signal, it means that our state would need to be handled in the RxJS stream, and we would just be using to signal to consume that state as a signal. We can't update the state once we use to signal in this case. This approach isn't wrong, it's just relying on RxJS as the state management mechanism rather than signals. That's not the topic of this video though. What I want to focus on is a slightly more advanced use case using a new API that was added to Connect. And I have to give another massive shout out to Chow for this. Uh, after initially using the Connect function, I was discussing hypothetically some potential changes for what was really only a minor annoyance with the way the Connect function worked. Chow then instantly comes up with an elegant new API, and then literally minutes later, not even exaggerating, here are the timestamps from the conversation, he had a new release deployed with this fantastic edition. So first let me show you the issue. Uh, the examples I covered in the last video were nice and neat because all they needed to do was set whatever the observable emits into the state signal. For example, this source is going to emit when the user has successfully authenticated, and we want to set the status property in the signal to success when that happens. So we just map the observable so that it emits an object that has the status property set to success. But sometimes our new state will need to be calculated from the old state. For example, in this case, when the remove source emits, it will emit the ID of the checklist to be removed. We need to use the existing state to find a checklist that matches that ID, and the new state we want to return is the array of checklists with that particular one removed. So we need to know what the previous state is. The connect function already has a way to deal with this because it also allows us to just supply a reducer like this. Now, rather than just setting what the observable emits into the signal, it will pass the observable's value to the reducer, and whatever the reducer returns is what will be set into the signal. The reducer has access to both the previous state and whatever value the observable just emitted. This works fine, but the downside is that we might want different reducers to handle different scenarios. That means we can't just have one neatly organized connect call like our previous example. If we wanted one reducer to handle removing items and another to handle adding items, we would need to call the connect function multiple different times for each reducer we want to use. Again, not really a big deal, but Chow's new addition of the with function makes this a lot nicer. Instead of separately calling the connect function with each different reducer we want to use, we can just chain on with calls like this. This is essentially doing the same thing as calling connect multiple times, it just gives us an easier way to do it. Now I have all of the streams that just set data directly into the state signal with no need for a reducer in this first with call. And then for each source that requires a reducer to access the previous state, like these add, edit, and remove sources, I just chain each of them on with their reducer using with. If you're interested in this reactive style of coding with Angular, you might be interested in checking out my course. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description. And if you like this video, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to catch you back here again.